In this video, I want to share with you what I think are three of the best niches that you can make and publish low content books in on Amazon KDP as a beginner. These niches are very popular niches with year round demand, but the books themselves are very simple and easy to make. Hi, I'm Caroline. Welcome to my channel. Every single week I share videos all about self-publishing books and you're watching one of them right now. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join me here. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any more videos just like this one. And don't forget to check out the link down in the description box below that will take you to the waitlist for my soon to be released course all about self-publishing books with a focus on low and medium content books so that you will be the first to be notified when that course is available. As a beginner to self-publishing books, using the Amazon KDP platform can be very overwhelming when you're trying to decide what your first book should be or trying to pick what niche you should be publishing a book in. There are so many different options and different people telling you what you should and shouldn't do that sometimes you just get frozen trying to decide what the best thing is to do and never actually start doing anything. So I wanted to create a video for you if you are a beginner or if you are stuck in choosing what niche you should publish books in or even if you're just looking for the next niche for your next book and you want a niche where the books are fairly easy to make because I think the hardest part is just getting started and if a book is too complicated or too time consuming or there's too much of a learning curve for you to make it then there is a pretty good chance that it won't ever get done. I've picked out what I think are three of the best niches for beginners and those three niches are all niches with demand all year round but they also have the opportunity for you to take advantage of holidays and events to boost your income at certain times of the year. The books that you'll be making for these niches are all simple books where you don't need any special skills like graphic design or illustrating skills. So any one of you will be able to make these books and these niches all have the opportunity to really build a brand and a series of books within them so you can maximize how much you could make in royalties by creating multiple books for your customers. Now, before I do get into these niches, I do just wanna take one minute to talk about something really important, and that is online security. No one likes to be watched or tracked, but it is happening every time you get onto the internet without you even realizing. One of my favorite affiliate partners is NordVPN, which helps protect your online privacy as well as give you digital security to protect you online. Using a public Wi-Fi network is the easiest way to have your data stolen and NordVPN can protect you from that as well as when you're just browsing privately at home, it can stop government agencies and marketers from tracking your private data. It can even stop targeted pricing when you shop online. If you are looking for an affordable and reliable VPN, I will pop a link down in the description box below to NordVPN. Okay, let's get into these niches. The first one is children's coloring books. Coloring books in general are very popular on Amazon and they sell very well. They are always a favorite of Amazon's customers. But when we're looking at some of the adult ones, some of them can get quite detailed and artistic. So starting with children's coloring books is a really great option. Children's coloring books is a really popular and profitable niche on Amazon. And there are a range of different ages that you can target. Generally, the younger the child, the more simple and easy the coloring book can be. Let's take a look at the children's coloring book niche. Now children's coloring book is a pretty broad niche, meaning that there are a lot of books competing there. So you can look at drilling down a little bit further, but first of all, let's have a look at what books we have under children's coloring books. We've got this Hopscotch Girls book, a very popular one. We have a big and simple coloring book for toddlers, ABC coloring book, we've got some animal coloring books, and there's a whole range of different styles, different age ranges that these books are targeting. And if we go back to the top here, we can see that there are over 60,000 search results for the phrase children's coloring book. So like I say, it's a very big, broad niche, and you can look at drilling down a little bit further into a niche that has a little less competition. So for example, you could look at the niche of children's animal coloring book or coloring book for children aged four to six 
or toddler coloring book. But just to offer you some guidelines, if you are doing some niche research, what you are looking for is whether that niche has demand with customers. So are customers buying these books? And you can tell that by looking at the bestseller ranks. A bestseller rank is a number given to every book in the Amazon store, and it determines the book's popularity with its customers. So the lower the bestseller rank, the better. So when you are looking through the search results, look for the bestseller ranks. And if there are a handful of books, at least a handful of books in the first page of search results with a low bestseller rank, that is a really good sign that there is a lot of demand for that type of book. So let's quickly browse at some of these. This book has a bestseller rank of 1,551. This one has a bestseller rank of 562. This one has a bestseller rank of 247. So absolutely amazing bestseller rank. If you don't have this when you're on your search results page on Amazon, this is a free plugin that I just installed a free extension that I installed. And you can get the bestseller rank by opening up each page each book and scrolling down to the book's information and you'll find the bestseller rank there, but it is much quicker to just install one of these free plugins and it will display the bestseller rank right there for you. This one here is the DS Amazon Quick View, free to install, and it will just display the bestseller rank at the bottom of each of the books on the sales results page. Now let's take a look at a couple of these books so you can see how simple and easy these books are that are targeting very young kids. So the first one I've pulled up is the Lucas and Friends coloring book targeting kids aged three to five. So it's for the toddler preschool age. And let's take a look inside at these really simple coloring pages. Basically this specific book is an ABC coloring book. So it's gonna have one page for each letter of the alphabet. And you can see how simple that is. It is just the letter A as big as it can get on the page with a little bit of illustration in the background, but nothing crazy. And then we have a page with an image of something starting with the letter A so the kids can associate the letter A with that word and that image with that word. And so it's a slightly educational factor here on this book as well. Then the next page we've got B, again a cute very simple illustration. And then the next page would have another image with something beginning with the letter B. So we can't see too much of the inside of this book, but I think you can get the idea of what these pages look like. Now, the next one I want to look at is this mermaid coloring book. And this one is for kids a little bit older, kids aged four to eight. And you can really see when we open up the inside of this one and look at the coloring pages, we can really see the difference in the coloring pages. They're getting more detailed. Unfortunately, we can only see two of them, but they're getting more detailed, much more detailed than the ABC coloring book, but still very simple illustrations. There's no not a whole lot of detail to these. Now we'll look at just one more and we'll look at this, my first coloring book, which is for toddlers. So the Creative Toddlers first coloring book, ages one to three. And these illustrations are gonna be sort of the biggest and the boldest and most simple. Very big, very bold, very simple. And there's also a little word there that will help the child associate the image with the word of what it is that they're coloring. But just really simple, very thick, black bold lines and not a lot of detail at all in any of these coloring pages. Now, these books are all very profitable. They are all doing very well in this niche. And to give you an idea of the potential of how much royalties can be made with books like this, we'll look at the toddler first coloring book, which is currently sitting with bestseller rank around 250. We use the bestseller rank to help estimate how many sales this book could be making every month. And I'm just gonna head over to the Kindlepreneur book sales calculator. We pop in the bestseller rank. It's a paperback. It has 103 pages and selling for $5.99. And so using that information, we can estimate that this book is going to be selling around 5,400 copies per month and making nearly $8,000 in a month. So these books are really simple to make, especially if you are going to target the very young children. Kids at that age are only just learning how to use pens and pencils. They don't have great pen control yet. So the images and their coloring, it just needs to be really big with very bold 
clearly defined lines on the images and just lots of white space so they can practice coloring within the lines. How can you make a coloring book like this for yourself? If it's something like the ABC coloring book that we looked at first, you could easily go and find a really big, fun, bold font to use and just put each letter on a page, make that letter as big as you can make it, and then just add some very simple bold illustrations around it. You can get images, illustrations, they're available in lots of places like stock image websites or even places like Creative Fabrica. Or if you are confident enough to draw these simple illustrations yourself, then just draw them yourself. The next niche that I think that is great for beginners is puzzle books, but more specifically word search puzzle books. There are lots of different types of puzzles out there and you can make a lot of different types of puzzle books, but some of the puzzles can get quite involved and end up taking quite a bit of time to make them. But I do love word searches and think they're great for beginners because they are pretty easy to make and you can make them very quickly. And word searches are actually one of the most popular types of puzzle books with Amazon's customers. Let's take a look at the niche on Amazon. So this is the word search puzzle book search results on Amazon and using the same guidelines as I mentioned before, what are the bestseller ranks of these books? Are they low enough to indicate that lots of these books are selling? First off, the first one that we can see has a bestseller rank of 677. We've got one there just over 23,000. There's some down here in the 3,000s, the 2,000s, the 3,000s. So yes, this is definitely showing signs, as I did already mention, that this is a very in-demand type of book on Amazon. And this is also a niche where we can get even further down into the niche. And that's a really good thing to have as well. So we can get a bit more targeted in our books and the content or the niche of our books to reduce the amount of competition if we want. We could make word search puzzle books for adults or kids. We can make large word search books with thousands of puzzles in it. You could target a specific event or a holiday or even a season. Let's take a look at a few of them. The first one I pulled up here is that bestseller in the word search puzzle book category. It's the big 4,000 new words word search. Now it says here on the cover there's 4,000 words and it can be a little bit confusing when you first look at it. You might think it's actually got 4,000 and puzzles in it but it actually has 4,000 words to find so a little bit of word play there on the cover to make it seem like there is a lot in there but in fact it's actually only 114 pages so there isn't a massive amount of puzzles within the book but let's take a look inside and you'll see how simple these are there's basically just a little page sort of giving an instruction on how this word search works and then we go into the word search puzzles and it's just the puzzle and the clues that you have to look for in each one there is nothing fancy about this book there are no images there is nothing creative about it it is just plain as it can get and it is the best-selling word search book on Amazon. The next one that I pulled up is another 4,000 word search for adults large print. Again, it's 4,000 words, not 4,000 puzzles. This one's currently sitting with a bestseller rank of 1,826. So fantastic and selling a really great amount of books. And you'll probably find this one is very similar to the one that we looked at because these books don't need to be fancy, although they have put a couple of little illustrations there at the beginning, but pretty much laid out exactly the same. The word search puzzle on the top half of the page and the words that you need to find on the bottom half of the page. Now these ones aren't themed in any way so they're not targeting any specific event or a holiday or anything like that so they haven't given their puzzle a name but if you did have some sort of theme to each word search at least, let's say you had one puzzle that was about animals, one word search that was about gardening, one word search that was about science, then you could put a fun little title up there, just something to give it a little bit more oomph. But of course, it's not necessary as we can see from these two coloring books. And a third one that I do want to look at is one is that is actually targeting kids. So word search for kids, this one's got a bestseller rank of 1786. So a great popular word search book for kids. And these are going to be sort of the same, except you'll find there's a lot less words to look for. The words, of course, are going to be very, very simple. And there's a lot less letters within the word search grid because you need to make them a little bit easier to find. This is for kids who are really just learning words 
and learning how to spell first of all and so these are a little bit more creative because kids like fun things and so it is a good idea when you are doing things for kids like this to not have them as simple as the adult ones have something just a little bit fun just to catch their eye just to keep them a little bit interested and so these ones have a themed puzzle to each word search and there's a couple of little illustrations just to make the page look a little bit more interesting now in terms of how much these books can make I'm going to quickly look at the big 4,000 word search puzzle book and it currently has a bestseller rank of 677 so I'm going to go back to the Amazon sales calculator pop in 677 and this one had 114 pages and it is selling for $8.99 which means that this book is estimated to be selling around 2,700 copies every month which is bringing in royalties of around $8,700 for the self-publisher so pretty incredible for this pretty simple book and at first glance it might seem like these are not very simple puzzles or books to make it might seem like it would be very complicated and time intensive to create them and so you might be wondering how you can easily and quickly create word searches and create a word search puzzle book it looks like it would just take hours getting those grids full of words and letters but luckily there is a great little tool that helps us make them in literally a few minutes the longest part of the whole process will be collecting your words so first you will have to create lists of words that you want to put in in each of the word search puzzles in your book. You can speed this up too though by using chat GPT and just pop in a prompt to create your lists. For example, we could just pop in create a list of 30 words or however many words that you want about gardening for a word search puzzle book. And that's it. Pop that prompt in and you're going to get a very quick list of words related to gardening. Now, you might want to adjust your prompts depending on exactly what you want the words to be and how difficult or, or long and, and things like that that you want, but that's just a very quick example. Another one, you could then go, my next puzzle is going to be a list of 30 words about space for a word search puzzle book and you probably don't even have to put in that it's for a word search puzzle book but sometimes being as detailed as you can with the AI tools is helpful and so there you've got two lists you just continue doing that each one took me literally a few seconds just to make those lists and then we want to just copy those words from chat GPT to use in your word search tool so you just need to pop those lists of words into a text file or a CSV file and the best tool in my opinion is instant puzzle generator I have a lot of videos showing you how to use this tool and this tool is the best in my opinion because it's allowed to be used for commercial use and for use to create books that are going to be sold on Amazon KDP now this is really important because you do not want to run into trouble down the track if the tool that you have used to create that book is only allowed to be used for personal use and that you are not allowed to use it for commercial use and you end up using it to create and publish and sell books. Now I'll do an extremely quick tutorial here just to show you how quick and easy it is to create these books. But if you do get the tool to use, it's really simple to learn how to use it. But we're just gonna create a quick word search puzzle book. So all we need to do is upload our words and literally that took me five seconds. There are the list of words that I created in chat GPT. So it doesn't matter how big your file is, whether you've got 50 puzzles, 100 puzzles or more, it is literally a click of the button, taking that list of words, upload them, voila, you have a book. And you can adjust some of the formatting if you want, if you want the grid to be bigger or smaller, which allows you to adjust that difficulty of how many letters are within the grid. You can adjust how you sort the clues. You can adjust how many columns your clues have if you want them spread out a little bit more. So there's formatting options that you can spend a little bit of time doing. But as you can see, I just used this global formatting over here, which changed the settings for every puzzle. So if I want every word search to have four columns, I can adjust that here. I don't have to go into every single page of the book. And that's it. If you are happy with that, the way that it is, you download that as a PDF file and it is ready to upload into your KDP account to publish the book. So I can't stress enough how quick it is using this tool to create word search puzzles. You can create these word search puzzle books and have them uploaded, published and available for sale on Amazon within literally a few days. The next niche that I think is really great for beginners is journals. Why do I think these are so great? One, 
journals are extremely popular niche on Amazon. Journals just sell really well. Amazon's customers love them. And two, they are really simple to make, which is the theme of this whole video, finding you really simple niches to create books in. You can make them as plain and simple as you want or as detailed and creative as you want. But first, let's take a look at the niche on Amazon to see what kind of journals there are available and popular with Amazon's customers, what Amazon's customers are buying in that niche. So I've searched just for the very broad keyword of journals. And when you look at journals on Amazon, you're going to see lots of different kinds, lots from self-publishers and lots from traditional publishers or retail stores like these ones, which are not what we are going to be creating, but these kinds of ones are going to come up in the search results. And you have to remember when we are looking at search results, we have to think like a customer. Customer's not going to be searching for a self published journal. They're just going to pop in journal and they're going to have all these options available to them. And all of these ones here, regardless of the cover or regardless of the type of book or who is selling it, these are all basically the really simple ones. These are all just a lined page, kind of like a notebook. But journals do usually have a cover that's quite artistic or eye-catching or maybe even has an inspirational quote on it. You can see these ones have some embossed designs on them. This one looks like it has some gold foiling on it or something like that. I've just pulled this one up quickly to look at as an example. It is not self-published. It's by Peter Popper Press. It's a very popular stationery brand. You can see that they have a really just beautiful designed cover, but the interior is is basically just lined pages. And so that's what most of those journals are going to look like that just came up in the search results under that broad keyword of journals. And these are great to start with if you just want to get experience making a book and you want to start with the basics, but you could even build up a journal brand if you wanted to, if you just wanted to create these really simple journals interior is simple but the cover is some sort of creative design you could create a brand around that kind of journal if you wanted and journals do really well as hardcover books too so that's another way that you could try to differentiate yourself from all those other journals available not just doing paperbacks so if you want to create something a little bit more premium hardcovers can help you do that there are also guided prompt journals and while these are a little bit more involved and a little bit more time consuming to make, they are still very simple and creating creating a guided prompt journal is a great way to make your book, your journal more unique than all the other journals that have just that basic lined page in them. I've searched for guided prompt journal here and there are so many different topics that you can create prompts about. This one here is about mental health. We have a morning habit tracker journal. We've got a guided prompt journal for self-discovery, for self-love. There is one targeting men specifically. We've got gratitude journals. There's journals for girls and teens for creating a happy life. There are so many different topics and that's why this is another great niche because it's something else where you can create a series. You can create a brand. You could create a whole series of journals guided prompt journals around all different topics that people might be dealing with in terms of their mental health. And one other thing that's great about journals is that in terms of promoting them and marketing uh, in an effort to increase your sales, they do specifically really well on TikTok. And of course, TikTok is free. So it's a great free marketing method. I did share a video a little while ago I will pop a link to it down in the description box below if you want to go watch it after this one where we did look at a guided prompt journal. In fact, we're actually going to look at it in just a second, but I go into depth about that book and how it became the best selling low content book on Amazon because of sharing videos about it on TikTok. But let's have a look at a couple of the guided prompt journals to see what kind of content they have inside of them and what the prompts look like inside of them. The first one I chose was the 52 week mental health journal. This isn't self-published, so it's going to have some colored pages inside which is not something we would generally be doing with low content books just to give you an idea of the types of pages when you get to the prompts and you can see that you can make these as creative or as simple as you want. So while the first part of the book was quite creative with some color and images, the actual prompt pages, they're pretty simple. There's the question, the prompt, and then there's just some lines for the person to complete those prompts. And so they're very simple. That's it. The next one I pulled up to look at is this guided self-love and gratitude journal for women. And we'll scroll down and see what the interior of this one looks like. So no color on this one, but a little bit creative. They've got some shading. They've got a couple of little illustrations. They've got a bit of a fun font. The actual guided prompts are simple. We've got a date. We've got three things they're grateful for, your favorite part of the day, three positive words, and what 
what can you do to treat yourself better today? And then it does have some inspirational quotes and things like that in the book. So all these things are just to help make it a bit more interesting and a bit more unique for the customer. But essentially it is just a prompt and then some space for somebody to answer that prompt. And that is it. And in terms of how much these books have the potential to make, let's take a look at the shadow work journal. So this is the journal I just talked about that became the best-selling low content book on Amazon due to TikTok. This book originally was self-published, but has since been picked up by a publisher. And it is still one of the best-selling journals on Amazon. Currently, it has a bestseller rank of 610 out of all books on the Amazon store. So if we pop that bestseller rank into the book sales calculator, 610, it has 272 pages, which is actually quite big. It's quite a big book. The book does sell for $21.99. It is currently on sale, which is why you're seeing the price of $12.39, but the actual real price normally is $21.99. So if it's selling for $21.99, it's estimated to be selling around 3,000 copies per month. And when it sells for $21.99, it has the potential to be making a whopping $26,000 plus per month. But if it is only selling for $12.39, just out of interest, let's say it is selling for $12.39, that means it is going to be making great royalties of almost $10 per month. So even if we're almost halving the price of the book, it's still making an amazing royalty. You can make journals using a word processor, something like Microsoft Word or Pages for Mac, if that's what you use or whatever program that you have available to you to make documents. Canva is also a really great tool to make books like this and Canva is free to use. And so you do have a lot of tools available to you to make these really simple journals. So those are three of the best niches for beginners to start publishing books in. Even if you are not a beginner, these are still really great popular and profitable niches to get into. They are all suitable to build up a series of books and a brand around and capitalize on what Amazon customers already love buying. I hope that you found this video helpful, that you can see how simple books can be really profitable on Amazon KDP and that it has inspired and motivated you to start self-publishing books of your own. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.